Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's training session. So uh, today we're going to be talking about whether or not it's a good idea to sell WordPress sites on a subscription. And, uh, and so that's, that's going to be the topic. And the reason I wanted to bring that up today is because I've, a lot of people ask me that. It's a, it's a thing. Sometimes it's not just on, on, a, on a subscription, but maybe on a commission, you know, like as, you know, some sort of a results guarantee or something like that. And then, you know, as, uh, you know, whatever. But the, the most common approach is to, uh, to say, you know, should I sell the subscription? Should, should I put like, put like a subscription or like a payment plan in place? So that um, so I can build these these WordPress sites. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that, and uh, I'm going to go over a couple of things. So we're going to talk about the subscription model in general. Then I'm going to uh, introduce a couple of, of potential red flags that might come up, that might uh, be warning signs or things that you might want to avoid. And then we're going to kind of dive into you know why are you considering the subscription in the first place, and um, and then after we get get through that, we'll we'll wrap up with. Is this a good approach and under what circumstances? And you know, if, it, if it's not a good approach, what might be a better solution? And so, um, so, so that's, that's kind of the roadmap for today. And um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, so I am Lee Blue. I always forget to introduce myself. I'm Lee Blue. I am the, the founder of the Double Stack program where I help WordPress developers scale their business to five to $10,000 per month consistently with a handful of clients that they can continue working with on an ongoing basis so they can do their best work and drive the best results for their clients. So that's what I do. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, websites on a subscription. So, so here's the idea. So the, the main thing that people will say to me is, you know, should I sell websites on a subscription? Because, you know, my clients, maybe, maybe they, they don't want to pay the full price up front. And they're like, you know, they can't afford the full price of the site. You know, what can I do to make the site more within reach, more attainable? And then the second, the second point that people tend to kind of hook into with is, uh, you know, would this be a good way to start bringing in recurring revenue for my business? Like if I could sell websites on a subscription, well, now instead of having like, you know, all these project fees that are kind of blocky, we have, um, have the ability to kind of bring in that, that consistent, stable, reliable, recurring revenue and is, is selling a WordPress site on a subscription a good way to do that? Or is there maybe a better way? So, um, so those are the two things that we're going to, we're going to be kind of diving into. And, you know, let's start out by saying, you know, what are some of the things that can potentially go wrong? Like what are some red flags with selling a site on a subscription? So, um, you know, one of the things is it, it kind of right off the bat that that kind of rubs me the wrong way with regard to subscription based uh, website development is that there that your clients kind of asking you to invest more into their business than they're willing to invest in their business and um, and so that I feel like is kind of right off right on the surface kind of a weird a weird situation where you know you as the service a service provider or a consultant is you know why why would, why would you be asked to invest more into the business than they're investing and you know it doesn't that kind of make the relationship a little bit lopsided right from the beginning so that's kind of thing number one, thing number one that's just kind of something to put you know you know just to ask yourself and, and wonder but it's not necessarily a deal breaker but uh, but the next one is this so can you afford to do your best work like that like and, and so if you're not actually going to be getting paid as you're doing the work can you actually afford, like even if you wanted to, can you afford to run your business in a way that is structured like that, where you're not actually getting paid for your work until significantly later? Like say, for example, you know that in order to really do your best work, you have to charge two, three, maybe $5,000 to be able to, you know, give yourself the time that it takes to implement, hey, hey, Rebecca, good to see you, to implement the full online strategy for your client. And oftentimes, you know, if you're charging like instead of instead of collecting that up front, you're going to try to collect it over the course of a year by maybe charging, you know, 200 bucks a month or something like that. Can you afford to kind of, you know, spread that out? Like, can you actually afford to do your best work when you're not actually getting paid to do it? And if the answer is no, then that's going to be a really big problem because now you're not doing your best. You're kind of rushing through it. And when as soon as you begin to go down that path, what you're going to notice is you're not going to be able to get the best outcomes for your clients because you're not able to do your best work. And of course, that's what they actually need from you. They need you to be able to show up and do your best work. And, uh, and if you're not structuring your business in a way to give you the opportunity to do that, 
I think you really should reconsider that structure and maybe think about things a little bit differently. And so that's kind of one of the big issues with the, with like subscription based WordPress sites. Like the subscription itself is, hey, Andrew, good to see you, man. And oh, high five to Rebecca. Boop. And, um, and so the, the big idea here is, you know, you don't want to set yourself up to either disappoint your clients or to frustrate yourself even before you start. And one of the things that does that tends to it, it, it's kind of like not being able to actually be compensated for the work that you're doing is a big problem. Not so much that you actually want the money, but you need the money. You have to be able to structure your business in a way so you can stay in business, so you can keep helping your clients. And, uh, and selling subscription-based websites tends to kind of put the structure in a kind of a weird position where you can't actually show up and do your best work. So, uh, so it's awesome to see people showing up and, and saying things. I always forget to just to say, Hey, if you happen to be here checking things out and, uh, you know, go ahead and just give me a high five like Rebecca did. And uh, just that way I can see who's here and what's going on. If you have any questions as we're talking through this stuff, or if any of this sort of resonates with you or whatever, uh, go ahead and put a comment on there. And like, uh, so like, like a question for you guys is, have you ever thought about selling WordPress sites on subscriptions? And if so, how did that go for you? Uh, you know, go ahead and put that in a comment below and we can all kind of talk about that. And then uh, the, the last thing is if, as we're talking about this stuff, you think, hey, you know, maybe you want a little, little bit more insight specifically into how this might work with your clients and the types of work that you do. Uh, and you might want to talk kind of more one-on-one -on -one about that. Then you can head over to doublestack.net slash call and, uh, and that's where you can actually see my personal schedule and we'll get kind of on the phone together for like 45 minutes. Like it's in depth for free. We dive into your business and work this kind of stuff out for your pricing, for your target audience. And really how can you structure your business in a way that, that you can scale it up to five to $10,000 per month uh, with a workload that's manageable, right? So that you're not just burning yourself out. So that's what I can help, help you with. And if you want to talk about that, awesome. And, uh, but for now, let's jump back into thinking about you know, this whole subscription based WordPress site sales model. So we, we were talking about like the two kind of presuppositions were that maybe the client can't afford the full cost of the website up front, And maybe this is a good way to start kind of generating some recurring revenue for your business. And that's kind of the premise of what we're talking about. So, and, but then you know, we started talking about some red flags, you know, maybe this might be an issue because your clients kind of been asking you to invest more in their business than they're willing to, which is kind of a lopsided thing. And then the other thing that we've hit on so far is can you actually afford to do your best work when you're structuring the, the pricing and, and your business structure like this, or do you find yourself kind of rushing through everything just so you can kind of get to the next client so that you can kind of keep your, keep your income goals coming, your monthly income goals that you need to actually stay in business. Because if you structure your pricing in a way that doesn't let you stay in business, that's no good for anybody. It's not doing anybody any favors because you're not able to do your best work for your clients. You're not able to stay in business. You're not going to be there to help on any sort of ongoing basis. And so everybody loses like that. So, uh, so those are the first two things. And here's the third thing. If you begin to do that, are you, are you beginning to feel resentment over the work? And that's, that's another thing that's going to really prevent you from doing your best work is if you don't feel good about the situation. So if you feel like you're not getting paid adequately or like everybody's getting a good deal, but you, or how come everybody gets paid except for you, you know, then you begin to develop this feeling of resentment that causes bad things to happen on down the line. You begin to resent the client, you begin to resent the work, you begin, you resent your job, you know, all of these negative feelings and emotions kind of get into the mix. And you obviously don't want that. You want the opposite of that. And so that's another red flag with regard to selling websites on subscriptions is that whole resentment factor. And then the fourth thing is, what if you do all this work and you really do say, okay, well, I'm just going to eat it up front in, in exchange for hopefully collecting things on the back end. But then for whatever reason, and maybe it's even completely out of the control of your client, but for whatever reason, they just cancel and they can't make all the payments. And so, you know, you, you put in like a, you build a three to $5,000 site up front, you collect like two, maybe 400 bucks for it, you know, over, over this $200 per month plan or whatever, but then, you know, they go out of business or they, they can't for whatever reason keep paying. And so they cancel and now you've lost out. And so that's another big issue where like you've now, you've developed this, this awesome site and boom, you've kind of lost out because, or, you know, sometimes it's even stuff beyond anyone's control. You just, they, they just can't keep paying anymore. And so that's a big problem too. So you, there's a lot of risk that's on your side when you implement sites on a subscription like that. And so those are some of the kind of the red flags to just kind of think through. And again, I'm not saying you don't, you can't absolutely under no circumstance ever sell a WordPress site on a subscription, but I want to present, you know, kind of a full picture 
because, um, you know, having done this for so long, I've, I've kind of taken a, taken a look at all the different angles on things. And I want to share that with you guys too, so that you can kind of benefit from that experience and maybe get a, you know, get, get a full, full view of what the issues might be. So now that we've kind of laid that out, let's dive into uh, the real heart of the situation, which is, are those first two presuppositions true? Like, is it really the case that the client can't afford the site? And is it really a good way to build recurring revenue for yourself? So even if those red flags were kind of out of the way, are those first two core issues, are, are, is, are they really the case? Is that really the way that the situation is? And I think what you'll find is that most of the time, the client actually can afford the website. And so oftentimes they're saying they can't afford it for other reasons. Like for example, like we actually did a whole training session on the I can't afford that myth that, uh, that clients tend to come back with. So if, that's, if you feel like that's kind of an objection or something that people say to you from time to time, then you know, check out the I can't afford that myth uh, training session that we did here in this group. You can find it here in the video section. And also if you want like a, a kind of streamlined view of all these training sessions, I repost them on my blog, doublestack.net slash blog. And so, and that's where you can actually type in a search for that video or whatever. So whatever form factor works best for you, check that one out because there's a whole in-depth training session on whether or not it actually is true that the client can't afford what you're offering. And, and kind of the summary of it is most of the time, it's not that they can't afford the website, it's that they're choosing to invest money in other things. And like I gave the example of this doctor I was talking to, who's literally like moving across the country, you know, you know, building and setting up an office space, you know, build, buying a house. And he bought this like eight foot wide, like etched glass logo thing and to, you know, to, to, to put behind his fancy desks that's on a harbor in Florida and, uh, you know, with IMAX and everything all throughout the office to kind of run the show. And, you know, how much does that cost? And they're like, he doesn't have a couple thousand bucks for his website. I mean, obviously he has the money. He's just choosing to put it in other areas. And oftentimes the reason is this, this whole service-driven marketing approach. Like most of the, of the people that I talk to approach their clients by offering the service of, and then they start listing all the things they can do. And this is also reflected on people's websites. Like most people have websites where they say, I can do web design and graphic design and branding and, and logos and business identities and maybe SEO stuff. And so there's a big long list of services. And so when you begin to offer services like that to your clients, oftentimes they're, you know, I can't even tell you how many times people have said, man, you know, I don't know what the problem is. I just can't get my clients to see the value. And so, and the problem is there are so many people that can offer the same kinds of services that even if you legitimately are better at certain services than other people, how does your client know that? How do you communicate that with your client when there's so many other ways to get your services? And most of the time, whether you ask this question yourself to, to yourself or whether your client's asking it from you, after you present a price, why can't they get the you know, why can't they get exactly what you just offer for half the price on on like Upwork or Fiverr or uh, you know why can't they just build out their site themselves on Wix you know because there's templates there they can just you know move Word docs to WordPress I like to say and you know how come they can't do that how do you justify the price of the of the project and that's what the issue is the issue is most of the time the justification of the pricing isn't there and that's why the clients say. I can't afford it. They say, I can't afford it because they don't feel like it's a good investment. And the reason they don't feel like it's a good investment is two reasons. They probably think they can get the services cheaper. And even if they couldn't, they don't feel like the return on the investment is going to outweigh the investment itself. Meaning what that means is they're going to spend more for the website than the website's going to make for them because they're not able to connect the dots as to how what, the, what you're doing online for them is going to actually impact their business in a positive way. Like how are they gonna make the money back from the investment? They're not able to connect those dots. And because of that, they're saying, that's too much, I, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, it's too, the, the price is too high. And so fixing that problem is really the key. That's really where the answer lies when, when it comes to answering whether or not you should sell websites on a subscription or whether they can't, you know, the, the whole I can't afford that thing. Most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, the reason people are contemplating selling websites on subscriptions is because the clients are saying, I can't afford that. And so now the web developer is trying to think, well, if they can't afford that, how can I structure it in a way that they can afford? And so now you're competing on price. 
And competing on price is always a losing battle when it comes to this kind of high ticket offer. Like you can't just, you can't, like we talked about on Tuesday, you can't solve a $5,000 problem with a $7,000 or with a $7, you know, sales funnel offer. And so all that is to say that when you're, when you're trying to just offer something purely based on competing with price, it's just a downward spiral. And that's exactly where we are today. That's what the problem, the main problem with the WordPress community and really web design consulting in general is that there's, there's a ton of places to get the services. And because there's so many more places to get the services, the prices are just going down. And what I think people are finding is even people that used to be successful two or three years ago are having a hard time charging the same rates that they used to charge and charging them today because of this whole, I can't afford that myth or that, you know, whatever. And, and so this whole concept of subscriptions comes up. And so, uh, so that's kind of thing number one. Is it really true that they can't afford it? And, 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 and kind of fixing that whole, situation where you kind of move away from just offering the services to actually letting them see the value by connecting the dots for, towards the results that you're actually going to be uh, generating for them, you know, helping them get to that point. That's really the issue. And if, and if that's something that you're kind of confused about and you want to talk about, you know, that's like, that's, I would love to talk to you about that. Totally go over to doublestack.net slash call and we'll figure that out specifically for you. But, um, but the other thing too then is, okay, well, you know, now that we've talked about you know, presupposition number one, I can't afford that. The second one, is this a good way to build recurring revenue for your business? And because you know, recurring revenue is a very important thing. And, and, if, and if you're not setting up some form of recurring revenue uh, in the form of like monthly retainers with your clients, then you're really leaving a lot of money on the table for yourself. And you're also adding a lot of stress to your life that's unnecessarily there because you're gonna be fighting that feast or famine problem where sometimes there's just way too much work and you can't do it. And so then you're frantically doing it all the best you can. And you're racing through, again, not, do, not, not, being, not setting yourself up with the opportunity to do the best work for your clients. But you have, well, what can you do? You have too much work, you're freaking out. And then you finally get to the end and you, you, you're about to feel relieved until you look into the future and say, oh, you know what? I was so busy doing work, I wasn't generating leads and now I have no work and no income and so now everything just drops down to the bottom. And that is a great way to freak yourself out. That's a, that's, it's very stressful. And so to fix that, you introduce recurring revenue into your business. And if you're not doing that, then you're going to be, you know, you're going to have all that turmoil and all that friction with all that, you know, fluctuating income and everything. So, uh, so and then the other issue with the recurring revenue, though, is people are like, okay, that sounds great. But, you know, if I just charge you know, 50 bucks a month for hosting, that's done, that doesn't fix it. That's not enough. And so maybe if I sold websites on a subscription, that could kind of bump up my monthly revenue. And is that a good idea? Is that, is that a good way to do it? So let's talk about that. And so my, my initial answer, again, like we kind of talked about in the beginning, was that that's not really the best way to build up your recurring revenue because you're investing so much up front and hoping to get the payout down the road. And so, so what that means is you're, you're piling on risk. You're piling on a lot of risk into your business that is unnecessary. You don't have to have that in order to be able to build in recurring revenue. And so, um, so that's, kind of the, that's kind of like the initial point. It's like, yes, it's great to get recurring revenue, but wouldn't it be better if the revenue was somewhat comparable to the effort that you were putting in rather than trying to just slam down all the effort up front, you know, hoping that you can somehow stay in business long enough to recoup the, the rewards on the end and hoping that people don't cancel prematurely. So, uh, so that's kind of an issue. And, um, and so you know, the, the, ov the overall point that I'm trying to make is wouldn't it be better if the retainers, those monthly re retainers, were kind of based on the actual effort per month that you spent doing the work? So rather than like, so the website on, on subscription approach means you put in like 40, 50 hours of work up front and then z almost zero work on the, on the subsequent months, hoping to, get, you know, hoping to get the payout. So you're eating it really, really heavy on that first month. And then you know, you're just kind of getting this passive income or whatever on the subsequent months. And, um, and so there's the risk. And then the other issue with that is all those subsequent months where you're trying to like, get the money back, the site is just kind of sitting there doing nothing. Nobody's there actually you know, putting the fuel in the tank, so to speak. And so it's just kind of sitting there without any kind of nobody's driving the results. And so, so here's, what, here's what I think would be a better approach for, for most situations, which would be instead of selling the website on a subscription, 
and, and, and like, and let's not, let's not make the assumption that yes, it really is the case that the client legitimately cannot afford the whole website up front. So like you've already gone through the, 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 the sequence of steps to figure out whether or not it's a, they can't see the value issue or if they legitimately can't afford it. And so if you get to the point where they legitimately can't afford it, but yet you still want to work with them anyway, and, uh, and you want to build in recurring revenue, then what I would suggest is instead of, so look, like the normal, the normal process is you build the website and you kind of build out the online presence. And then from that point forward, then, then you set up the monthly retainer for the ongoing work that you do month to month. So, and that's where the, that's where the value comes in for you with recurring revenue is that month to month retainer. And so rather than doing it that way, if it legitimately is the case that the client can't afford it, you do want to take the project on anyway, and you want to structure an offer that people can accept, then why not do the retainer first? That's kind of a, that's kind of a big eye-opening idea. So before you build the website, you know, you know, structure the retainer first, because most people usually already have a website or some, something is going on online already. And why not just use that stuff that's there already and then start putting in that, you know, two or three hours per week, you know, maybe 10 hours per month kind of thing. And, um, and then doing the work to drive the results best you can with what they've got. And then as those results start coming in and they start seeing the extra traffic, the extra leads, and they start making more money, then they, then you're helping them be able to invest in the larger website itself. And when you structure it that way, then I think what you'll find is a lot of the issues we've talked about already are kind of, they kind of just kind of work themselves out because now you don't have to invest a ton of time and energy up front, hoping that it gets all paid out at the end. And, uh, and then, and, and you're not investing, you know, putting all this risk in up front and, you know, everything, nothing's lopsided. You know, the, 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 you're not investing in more into their business than they're investing into you. You're getting paid for the work as you do it. And, uh, and so, and, and you've got the retainer right there. So you really have that recurring revenue coming in. And so then the question becomes, what is it that you can do in that retainer? And so obviously the retainer is going to look a lot different if you actually do the retainer first, right? If you do the retainer before you build out the new website, then, you know, some of the things that might otherwise be in the retainer, like maybe plugin updates or hosting or whatever else, you know, wet WordPress security, those types of things probably won't land in the retainer yet because you're not doing that stuff. And then you're going to have to figure out, well, what, what can I do instead? And so, uh, and so that, that really is a very client specific thing. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing that we can talk about, you know, about your clients, like, like what, what you can do. But the overall idea is, you know, figure out what kinds of skills that you have, what kinds of things that you can offer, and then what, kind, what combination of those skills can you deploy for the client that you're working with that's going to drive a business result, a business outcome for them, and then do that month to month. And then as the results come in for that, and, they be, and then your client begins to see that you're actually, you know, doing the work that you say and you have a better relationship and you're making them more money, then they can, you know, eventually afford the, you know, the larger projects. And so that's kind of, um, you know, other people sometimes refer to it as sort of like walking up the value ladder. And I think that that's kind of, is kind of the idea, but, um, but, it, but it's also fair, fairly different from it because it's not really walking up the value ladder. It's not like giving them a little tiny website and then hoping they come back for more. And, uh, and the, really, the really big difference that, uh, that I feel like a lot of people tend to overlook is, you know, when you, when you hand somebody something cheap or, or, or lower price than what maybe you otherwise would have sold, a lot of times the cheap thing doesn't do anything. So like, for example, what if you said, I'm going to sell a $3,000 website? They said, no, I can't afford it. And you said, okay, I'll give you a $1,000 website. Why? why? Why would you have offered the $3,000 website if you really could have offered a $1,000 website? Because you'll be pulling stuff out that they actually need and so then what will happen is you give them something that's not going to give them any results. So rather than scaling back what they actually need and giving them something that's not going to work out for them and then everyone gets frustrated, why not say, hey, okay, maybe you can't do the $3,000 website right now. Let's just put that over here on the side for the time being. And let's, you know, here's, some, here's a different approach. Why don't we start working on maybe driving some more traffic uh, to your business through social media, or maybe we can do email stuff, or maybe, I don't know, depending on what the client is, they're going to have different needs, you know, drive more calls, whatever they need, you know, do that kind of stuff first. And then as that begins to grow, then build out the website aspect of things. And so all of that is to say, if you want to, if you want to get some extra ideas on what you can put into those, into those, like, into like the upfront retainer, 
and, uh, and try to figure out what that is. Cause you know, I know a lot of people t- kind of feel stuck figuring out, well, you know, if I, if I can't do SEO because we haven't built the website yet and I can't host the website and I can't do plugin updates, you know, then what's left? What, what am I supposed to do? So that's the kind of stuff that we can talk about. So if that's, if that kind of is, is resonating with you, head over to doublestack.net slash call. And that's where you'll see my schedule and you and I can talk one-on-one about it and kind of, you know, figure that out in the context of your business and the people that you're working with, because everybody's different. Like everybody's business, you know, everybody's going to need different kinds of things. Like for example, like if you're working with like local restaurants, you know, what they need is going to be a lot different from somebody who does like landscaping or, or lawn care or whatever. And so all that is to say, let's figure out what you can do for the clients that you're working with. And if, and if this is kind of resonating with you and you want to kind of take it to the next level, then let's do it. So, um, so that's kind of the big idea and, and my, my overall view as to whether or not it's a good idea to sell WordPress sites on subscription. So I don't know, hopefully this was helpful for you guys and it's great to see all you guys showing up. And again, you know, high five for everybody. It's awesome to see. Oh, look, there's a question. Uh, track the, oh yeah, okay, those are just statements saying that, yeah, good, good stuff. Okay, cool. So, um, all right, guys. So, if, if you guys want to talk more about this in general, we can uh, we can do that here on the comments thing. Or if you want to do it more specifically, like one to one, like about your specific business, then uh, doublestack.net/call is the place to go for that. And uh, and we can get connected for like a, a free forty five minute phone call about uh, how you can start implementing some of these concepts into your business right away. So uh, so all right. So if you have any anything else to say, let me know. But, uh, but that's what we've got for today. And then uh, we do these training sessions twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at, uh, at 2 o'clock Eastern this time. So um, awesome. That's what I got. I hope you guys have a fun and safe weekend. And uh, we'll be back again together next week. High five for the weekend. Boop. All right, guys. Take care.